this all takes us to the first set of policy choices that I mentioned in my opening comments. And here I see it is the, it is really the choice between market rationalism and economic nationalism. And remember, it was China's initial move away from state Marxism toward market economics in 1979 that first launched China on a growth strategy. So we think that that would sort of settle the discussion. But yes and no, yes and no, because I think there's also many uh, strong reasons seen from a Beijing perspective for the government to maintain an active role in economic management. Uh, for one, uh, just as an employment mechanism, there are thousands of state-owned enterprises that might not be economically viable but play an important role in society and they require government support to survive. Then there are ministries and political ecosystems that are built around various market segments such as steel or mining uh, that become a bit self-perpetuating. There's also from a policy basis there's a desire among leadership for state dominance in certain sectors such as technology uh, so the country promotes national champions and erects barriers to uh, competition on that basis. Uh, and, and finally, there's political ambivalence about the rise of a creative class or the need of a creative class, even though the same breath Chinese leadership will tell you they want to move up the manufacturing production chain. So if you add to those reasons the very normal mix of bureaucratic rationalization, rent-seeking, and inertia, you can see why there still uh, be the allure of an active government role in the economy. 